everyone. Welcome back at Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. I am in my office. I am confident. I have taken out my sewing machine today. I am making a pair of Roman shades for my daughter's room. Stay tuned. My middle daughter has two windows in her room and no window treatment. The first thing you need to do is you need to measure your windows, obviously. Now, I'm gonna take you upstairs to her bedroom so I can show you a little bit more about how I measured. There are two things to consider when you are making Roman shades. You wanna decide if you want the shade to go up and down within the frame of the window, that's an inside mount, or do you wanna mount the shades outside the window frames so that you will be covering the window frame and the window sill. This is a bedroom, so I actually want to block as much light as possible. So I have chosen to mount the shade on the outside of the windowsill. Obviously, the measurements that I'm using for my shade will be very different from the measurements you are using for your shade, but essentially, I figured out what I wanted my finished shade dimensions to be. And then I added a little bit of wiggle room on all four sides. I added four inches on the top because I need fabric to wrap around the piece of wood that I'm gonna use to hang the Roman shade. I added three inches to the bottom so that I could hem the bottom and have a nice neat edge there. And then I added five and a half inches inches on either side because I am going to sew a liner in place and then I'm going to make sure that that's a nice clean edge and it worked for my first shade. I'm hopeful it'll work on my second. Let's get started. I am working with spoon flower on this post. They have lots of different fabric materials and then obviously patterns for miles. I sat down with my daughter and she actually helped me select this one which I love. I am crazy about it. I will include a link in the video description to this the day bed that I made in our last house. That day bed is also covered in spoon flower fabric. So we were trying to find something that would match the day bed. I think this will be perfect. I really, really love it. An important thing to consider whenever you are working with fabric that has a pattern is where that pattern is gonna sit on the finished piece. So I'm gonna take a look at the fabric. I'm gonna look at the first shade that I made and I'm gonna try to figure out where I want that pattern to go. This is the blackout liner that I'm gonna sew on the back of the curtain. And one thing that I'm going to add to the liner first are pockets for dowels. So I want these dowels to go inside the Roman shade so that when I pull it up and down, that pleat is nice and crisp and dowels are a really inexpensive way to do this. According to my cheat sheet, I want my first dowel to be five inches from the hem. So five inches from the bottom edge of the curtain. So that is eight inches from the bottom of the fabric. I have looked at this a lot. So now I'm going to pin the pockets. Okay, that's one pocket down. Now I'm gonna measure eight inches and I'm gonna do three more pockets, repeating the process so that there's eight inches between each one. If my earlier explanation felt a little confusing, hopefully now it's beginning to make a little bit more sense. So notice that I have pinned these little pockets and once I've sewed them, the dowels will be able to just slide right in. This is gonna go on the back of the Roman shade and these dowels are gonna provide a little bit of structure so when you open and close the shade, you'll have nice crisp pleats where the fabric is folding. One thing I am adding to my Roman shades is a little bit of decorative trim. I just thought it would make it a little more fun and playful. So I'm gonna sew the trim onto the fabric first. I could certainly use fabric glue, but because the trim is gonna be gathered along with the shade, I thought that it might be a little bit more secure if I just sewed it. So I wanna do that first before I attach this to the lining. I've already sewed the first side in place. I have sewed it six inches from the edge. This way, once I have hemmed the side, it'll be more like four and a quarter inches from the side. I've done that measurement. So I am now gonna pin it in place on this side and I'll sew it. I have sewed my trim. I have sewed my rod pockets. Now it is time to attach the liner to the curtain fabric. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the bottom edge. Notice that I have the right sides of the fabric facing each other. So I'm gonna line up the edge and I'm gonna sew along the side seam using a one half inch seam allowance. Make sure when you're sewing that you have the rod pockets going in the right direction. So now I'm simply going to sew along this edge. For the other side of your Roman shade, you're going to line up your edges. Now, the fabric is gonna be quite a bit wider than the liner. This is on purpose, bear with me, you'll see why I did this. But for now, you're gonna sew that same nice even seam along the edge with a half inch seam allowance. It may be a little hard to see on camera, but I have sewed the two sides of the curtain and notice that the liner is in fact smaller, but that is by design. You're going to make sure that the liner is centered. So I'm gonna measure that this edge here is the same width as this edge here, and then you're gonna sew along the top seam. I'm leaving the bottom of my curtains for last, so I'm gonna sew this, but the first thing I need to do is make sure that my liner is centered. My dowels are only 36 inches and I needed them to be 44 inches, so I added four inches on either side. I used a combination of wood glue and tape. It's obviously not super sturdy, but I'm hoping it's enough just to maintain the shape. So to insert the dowels, what I'm going to do is, notice that I have sewed my dowel pocket. That's no big deal. I'm gonna give this a little snip here, just enough to slide the dowel through. And I'm gonna do this on all of the ends of my pockets. Now I'm going to carefully insert my dowels into the pockets. Let's see if I can do this. Notice that the dowel sticks out on either side by about an inch, and because of the way I sewed it, it means it needs to go a little bit beyond the lining. One thing I did that will help is I have just snipped this corner off a little bit, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully turn the entire shade inside out. And this is the point when these dowels will end up inside the shade, and it won't matter that you can see them a little bit. So the last thing that I'm gonna do before I sew my rings on is I wanna make sure that the bottom of the shade is centered the same way as the top of the shade. So I am going to make those little adjustments and then I'm going to hem this just the way I would hem a piece of clothing. I have measured and pinned the lower hem, and now I am going to carefully run it through the sewing machine. I'm not gonna bother with a hidden stitch because the fabric is kind of busy. Also, there's gonna be some trim there, but if you wanna get fancy, you can definitely do that. So I am going to use fabric glue and I am gonna glue one layer of trim along the bottom just because I can. I'm gonna add a second layer right on top. I am going to clamp it in place with just these paper clips just so that I can make sure that as much of the fabric as possible is in contact with the trim. I sewed the rings on by doing a couple of stitches through the liner and through the rings, and then I also did a couple of stitches around the dowels and through the front part of the curtain. So those are sewed in place. I will show you in a minute how I decided the distance. They're two and a half inches from either hem, and then I just did one more row up the middle. So the final touches that I'm doing now is that I wanna put some dowels in the bottom just to give it a little weight. So I'm gonna insert those and then I'm simply gonna use a needle and thread and I'm gonna sew up this seam of my hem and then I'm gonna sew up this seam of my hem.
All right, let's come to the top of the curtain. Remember I told you that I had sewed these rings two and a half inches from the side? Here's how I determined that. So this is my locking mechanism. You've seen that on Roman Shades. This is so that you can lock the string and I won't need to have a cleat. And then this is just a pulley. I could probably use eye hooks, but I was able to find some on Amazon. Again, I'll include links to all of these. So these are gonna be on the top of my shade. So if you picture this board, this board is gonna be on the windowsill and then I'm gonna need the pulley and the cleat or this mechanism. These are gonna be on top of it and then the strings will go through it. So I wanna make sure that the string is gonna go through the rings up through the pulley and then down through the lock. And so I needed to make sure that this ring was aligned with the pulley. If those are screwed onto the board like that, it's about two and a half inches from the center of the pulley. And the string's gonna go through. So that's how I determined this measurement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure this fabric to one edge with staples, and then I'm gonna wrap and I'm gonna secure it to the board again with staples. I am gonna tie my cord to these bottom rings and then I'm gonna run it up and then through the top and then we're gonna be done. Okay, my kids are home from school, so there is a real chance that you're gonna hear screaming downstairs, but I wanted to quickly show you how I plan to mount these shades. I am simply using one of these brackets. I like these because they're a little bit more discreet, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw one in right here. I know there's a stud there along the window frame. I'm gonna screw the other in right here, and then this is sort of a wide window, so I actually might screw another one in there just for a little bit more support, but I'll have to check for a stud and get my stud finder as well. So one thing I am aware of is, do you notice that these mechanisms right here, these mean that I won't be able to use that L bracket right up close. So what I think I'm gonna do is use an anchor and I'll put the L brackets maybe in a little bit narrower for this one. So let's get started. I know there's a stud right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do that because at least that's one anchor point. And now I simply am going to put the Roman shade on top of those L brackets and I'll drill up from the bottom with some smaller screws. Okay, I realized that I actually can't get to the second hole on the L bracket, but honestly, that feels pretty sturdy. I don't think I need it. So I'm just gonna leave it like this. I am so pleased with how these Roman shades turned out. I love the added detail of the trim. I love the little pink fringe along the bottom and they really work well. So that obviously was the ultimate goal. I'm sort of amazed I was able to pull this off. If I can sew these, so can you. Leave me a comment and let me know if you have ever sewed anything like this. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a great day everyone.